Oh. Got it. It told me we were recording. That's funny. <laughs> Sarah, introduce yourself. <clears throat> okay. Um, I, my name is Sarah Campbell. I went to AG, like, I don't even know, like five years ago. I graduated in 2016. Um, I was in Nuttall's um, AG TV class. I was in literally every single one of them, like the morning announcement class, the intro to video class, and the afternoon announcement class. Plus I helped him with like after hours school things and like the AGSN stuff. Um, and then I went to Point Park for cinema production and I went there for four years. I ended up concentrating in producing um, and I still have like 18 credits left to graduate, but my last semester was like in the middle of like when COVID hit and everything switched to Zoom and I just didn't finish. Um, so I still have a little bit to go before I get my actual degree. Okay. So why did you cho choose Point Park? It kind of just like the only decision for this area, because really, I think the only th other thing that they had for like film at the time was the Art Institute. And I'm really glad I didn't choose the Art Institute because yeah. they, they went out of business. <laughs> um, but they have all these other film programs like Robert Morris and Pitt and stuff have like film studies, but it's not the same thing. Point Park is really the only school in like this area um, that has a cinema production program where you actually have like hands-on equipment and make films and you're not just like learning about it in a classroom, um, which also you do like you study films and analyze like you literally I watched maybe six films a week in class. It's pretty much because there are three hour classes, you would do like an hour and a half film and then like an hour and a half lecture on the film um, for some of the classes. And then you would like actual production courses where you just use that time to do um, your production work. Um, but Point Park is really nice because it was local. Like I wasn't really interested in like moving out of the state at first. Like, cause I just wanted like, like you're young, like it's like hard financially. So if you are able to like go to a bigger school like California or New York or something, that's great. I have tons of friends who went to NYU and they loved it and had a good time. But sometimes it's just more comfortable to stay home because going to college is already so scary. <laughs> um, but it was a really um, good time. Like I learned a lot. I, I'm in a lot of debt but it was honestly, <laughs> at least you're honest <laughs> it, was a, it was a worthwhile so how many films have you worked on or how many projects have you worked on um maybe like 25 what did you do in each of the 25 it was always different because um there's just like Point Park's honestly a small program because they only let 90 people in and each year more and more people drop out and they like are like or change majors because they don't want to like they're like nah I'm not really fit for this so you're working with like a really small group of people and you're on doing so many films because you have to do so many films for so many different classes and so many different assignments so you kind of ended up like doing different roles and different hats on each film so I've done I've like, um, except for, you know, I've directed, I've directed a few of my own. I directed, produced, edited, did sound. Um, I've been a PA, I've acted on people's films because they lost an actor. Like there was one film for my friend for their advanced directing class and he didn't have an actor like the day before. And um, I was just supposed to be there for just I was on the project because it was like I was assigned to it for class and he was like yeah Sarah like because we have the, we can also take acting classes as an elective so I was in the acting classes with him so he's like Sarah I know you can act can you like do this role for me like for tomorrow it's like you can read the lines on the table like and we'll just cut out like you like looking down and stuff and I was like no I think I got it I like memorized all the lines the night before and I was able to like help him out and like really sell his film and made it super good for him so it's just kind of a things you get thrown into you can literally do whatever you want <laughs> so when you you said that um that you've done pretty much everything what is the one job that you enjoyed the most producing that's why i chose to concentrate in it um because like directing you're in charge like creatively create oh my god create creatively um and you get to like make a bunch of decisions like based on how you want the actors to act and how you want the set to look and stuff but when you're the producer you get to like make all of the decisions 
all of them. Like what time you want to shoot, like, like you get to like book all the locations. You are basically in charge of everybody. You're in charge of the set times. You're in charge of like booking all the schedules and stuff. Um, it's more like the business aspect of it, but you get a lot of creative control too, because, um, you're in charge of the budget and you get to, you have to raise the budget. Um, so all the money that goes into your film and all the, um, all of the promoting, like I like did all the social media promoting and all the fundraisers. I'm like, that's all you. And it's the hardest job. <laughs> it's the hardest one on the whole, on the whole crew. Is but, to, to raise the finances, to be able to put it together. No, just because the producer does like every, like without a producer, nobody else on the set can do their job. So which you're I, setting. Which I think is interesting. Now, the other thing I, I wanted to ask you is that when did you do any writing yeah i had to take a few screenwriting classes because and i it was so long ago since you were here we had an issue with people writing scripts do you feel that it's beneficial to have a script for anything you do you, it's like required. Like we're not allowed to start a project until we turn in a, uh, a, a storyboard. And with that being with, said, how like difficult if, is it? What is it? How difficult is it if I did yeah. it without it? Yeah. It's just, you wouldn't be able to do it because like the actors would have no clue what they're doing. And we all have such busy schedules and things going on. You don't, and you have only a limited amount of time on these certain locations that you're paying for. And you're paying for all of these props and costumes. Like you spend a decent chunk of change on some of these films. Um, and it doesn't come from the school. Like you have to pay out of your own pocket for them. Um, so without that, like you need, like, and it wasn't just that. We had to have screenplay, storyboard. You have to have a shot list because then you needed to know what time, like the shot list, like if it said, like you were doing certain scenes, you had to order them by location and by what actors could be there at what certain time and what time you had the location till. So if you weren't down to your certain part of your shot list by the time that um, you had on there, like mapped out, you were behind and you were going to be screwed and you weren't going to get to shoot every shot you need to shoot. Um, and sometimes there are like difficulties. You just need to like, if you don't have that stuff, it's not going to work. Like you probably wouldn't even get through like one day and if you did it'd be like a it looked like a total mess and it'd also be so hard for whoever's editing it because they'd be like this is a jumbled mess okay so I, I i find that interesting so you just said when you were there you had to pay for out of pocket for your location I, that's almost why i like it was so hard for me to finish because i was just trying to work full time and also go to school and all these films we had to do like so many films per class especially our senior year and i was tapped out i could not and everyone else's films some people who had like like parent money and didn't have to work like their films would look so much better because they could have all this time for preparation because they didn't have to work and they had all this money that they could just use for their films cuz their parents were them, so they always looked so much better so it was so competitive but like Honestly, like if, if you balance your time out right and you just use a little bit of money and you get thrifty, they can be just as good. So when you when you did the editing portion of the film, is that difficult or is that you explain to me what it is? Um, it's so funny because you know, like whenever I did videos for your class, like I edit all my stuff all the right. time, like. I I couldn't stand editing <laughs> and probably my least favorite role just Why? because the software is so hard. What it's software like, are they using? Uh, they use Adobe Premiere and Avid. Okay. Um, I'm still trying but, to get my hand I, on Adobe Premiere, but I haven't had much luck yet. So. Final Cut Pro is so user-friendly. It's just easy to use. Adobe Premiere frustrated tech out of me. Um, mm -hmm. It also because with editing, you have we're using bigger cameras. We're not just using like smaller camcorders. Right. So 4K footage. So you have to render all the clips, which takes hours. So takes for is everything being recorded on SD card now? Yeah, we use SD card and we um, transfer everything onto like two hard drives. Okay. What happens if a hard drive goes down? That's why we have two hard drives. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had both hard drives go down? Um, no, not to me, but it's happened to people just because they're like careless and they drop them and okay. or lose 
lend them to someone just like that's why I like being the producer because I'm in charge of those hard drives and all that stuff so if if it's some like no one can mess up because I'm not going to mess up so you made a comment that um final cut is user friendly yeah the skills you learned on final cut were you able to transfer them to adobe and Abbott? oh yeah like that was the easy part like i could if i could cut and like edit and like make rhythm to the films like super easy it's just it was so hard to get to that point because of all the technical stuff that i didn't understand okay. i'm like wait where's this button? Where is this? And it kind of like messed up the flow and it made me super frustrated. So, but like, it's easy. Like if I didn't know how to do the final cut stuff, like, and didn't know how to edit prior, I would have been so lost. Okay. So you, you did actually get something when you were here. Then. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you would have been able to come to a school board to tell them that, but unfortunately they went on with their plans without me. So anyway, um, what is the most difficult part of working in a film or working on a film? Working with other people. Why is that? Um, because some people, like, it's just, you know, it's anywhere. I'm sure all of you guys, like, raise your hand if you work in a part-time job right now, like, after school. Yeah, there's a few. Only a few of you. Like, you guys, like, do you guys, like, hate some of the people you work with? <laughs> Because they're like, they have personality problems. And when you're working with people, like, and you're the one, like, spending your own money in your own free time, um, like, because you're not getting paid for it. So you're spending your own money in your own free time. And then you're working with these people who have these, like, power position issues. And, like, if you can't get along and people are, like, making your life miserable on set, like, it's just, it's awful. But, like, if you can get past that and you can find a niche and, like, people, actually like working with then like you can actually have fun <laughs> and not be worried about like having to go work with this person you absolutely hate did you went before you got into this did you realize how much work was behind it um I don't think I think I kind of understood because like I've always really been interested like in movies and filmmaking like for like since I was literally in elementary school it's kind of all I wanted to do um and I've always been like, like, cause I was really into like books and movie making and movie production, like, like with all of my favorite, like books and series when I was in middle school. And I kind of like always like knew what was going on, but in order to like do it myself, like I knew what it was, but I didn't know it would be so like dr mentally draining. Like I knew it would be a lot of work, but it's just, you gotta like, you gotta like take care of yourself and know when you need a break and know when to say no and how to put your foot down and like not let people push you over and do their work and do more for someone who doesn't even appreciate what you're doing. Um, okay. It's it's not like, it's a lot of work, but I think if you just do like a little bit of research and like look into, like if you don't know too much about it and you watch some like documentaries or people talking about it, um, you kind of just get an idea and it can it can help you prepare for like, all of the dynamics of different roles and like what to expect. So what was the largest budget you had? The one that I raised for my P3. Um, and I think I spent like six grand okay. on an eight minute film. Um, wow. And, but come I, out to a minute, jeez. Yeah, I had the smallest budget because it was, you had to raise it yourself. And all of my other friends, you know, have like the rich parents and the right. big jobs where they have all these different friends that could donate to them. Um, the biggest budget was like 15 grand. Okay. So can and they that, literally train car. They built a train car. They built a train car. Yeah, from scratch. Why didn't they just go find one? Because... Um, they needed it. It was literally the entire film was set on the train car. Okay. They needed it done in a sound stage. Ah, so gotcha. that, okay. Yeah. So it could be done with like limited noise and it would have been so difficult to do it somewhere where there are a bunch of people around. Gotcha. That makes sense. So you're looking at, we'll say $15,000. Yeah. Is the pressure on a $15,000 film the same it would be on a $10 million film? What is it? Would the pressure be the same on a $15,000 film as it would be on a $30 million film? 
absolutely not that the million yeah. dollar films I, I wouldn't even know what kind of because for those million dollar films you've probably got at least 500 plus employees or something on one film like and everyone's gears are moving like like a like a way like the gears move in a watch like all have to work together in seamless fashion for it to go on time because if you go past like even with um with like our films like that were really like small compared to bigger blockbusters if you went behind or something happened you'd be paying for that location for another day okay. like if you like go behind on a bigger motion picture that's why half the time um like they go over budget is because issues happen like with covid that's why a lot of things um took forever to be in production because there's been no money and they need like to stay on time and if people are getting sick and you have to quarantine and you can't stay in production because you have to like follow safety measures it's costing a lot of money time is actually time literally equals money in the film industry you and correct me if I'm wrong, because I remember you telling me that you had to use a bar for one of your scenes, but there was yeah. a screw up with the location. Um, that you that was booked for a different amount of time, and you had to use it longer. It was over oh, yeah, yeah. I think I vaguely remember that because okay. that was so long. Ago. It was I a long time ago. I did, I think I did have it for longer and they were like, actually, you can only use it for this many hours. Um, it wasn't a big deal because it was like, like a lot, it's just honestly, you want it longer for safety, for like cleanup and tear right. down. And so people can have lunch. You have to feed them on the set. Like it's required. Um, so you just need extra time. So that way, if there's any issues or something that you're not like pushed down the last minute, but it was just like a group's extra scene. So all we had to do was just like, it was one thing, like a song. So we just had to shoot them, this band singing this song from different parts, like getting like extra shots and crowd shots and the band shots and close up shots. So it was easy to kind of rush but you always just want to have more if it was a different scene like it was a longer dialogue scene where you had to like give the actors like more chance to be prepared and like work up their um their performance and stuff if they had to be like rushed it would have it would have showed in the performances on screen okay so yeah so now i'm going back so when you're editing and you're looking at this stuff how much do you have control over as the editor? Does everything come from the director and the producer? It depends on how big the project is and what kind okay. of like, if you're on a big crew project where everyone has a role, then the director basically, basically tells the editor what to do. Um, like the editor will kind of put together like a rough cut of like all the, like they'll match all of the sound. Like, cause the sound in the video doesn't come together you have to match, like you use a boom pole and you record the sound and then you match it up to the uh, the video later, which is why you have to use a slate. Um, so that way you can, uh, you can like match it to where the slate closes and then it will like seamlessly put the rest of it together. Um, so the editor basically does that, makes like a rough cut of all of the clips together just so it's in like time order. And okay. then the artistic voices being like the director, like, well, do you have a close up for this? Like, where's the close up? Can you just put that in? Or like, I'd rather you cut that a little shorter or cut to like this object or something because like they'll like have a, a plan for what kind of story they want to tell. So it's more of like teamwork, but the editor does like most of the bulk work. Okay. So how much footage does it take for an eight minute film? How many hours? I don't know how many hours, but it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> It's the the, like, that's the, like, it's- The reason it's I like, ask is how much B-roll is necessary and how much you never see. That I don't know because I don't really, I didn't, on my P3, I didn't, uh, I wasn't really involved with the editor and the director on that. Okay. Um, but it's a, I think it's just like, it's a few SD cards worth. Really? Yeah, it's a, it's a lot, but I don't know. We have big SD cards too, like lots of storage, but um. It was a lot of footage. I have no clue exactly how many hours it was, but if you think about it, it was just like hundreds, hundreds of shots, like three or four or five takes a shot, lots of B-roll. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot to sift 
too and match sound too it's it's like weeks of work do you think the average theater viewing public understands how much work there is behind making a film most of them don't know like they have no clue they're just like and then they're so quick to be like that movie sucked they're like that movie sucked like this was the worst i'm like okay yeah but like that movie literally took nine months to produce like (laughs) cost millions of dollars like it's it's a it's still a work of art it's still like it's still like i don't even know how to say it um Like you can't even like comment on something and say it's bad because it took so much work and so much money. And that's just what somebody else wanted to make. You didn't have to like it. Like it's still work. (laughs) So do you have a new appreciation when you go in to see a film? Oh, it's so weird. It's not even like an appreciation. It's more of like a, like in my head, like I, I like look for things and I like, I'm like, like wow like I'm like that cut was weird or um I see like a continuity mistake or something or I'm like that that was a plot hole that doesn't make any sense what they said earlier doesn't match that it's kind of just like a a nitpicking thing but I'm like yeah this was like hard work but then I just get into my like my head about like all the little things that I notice just because I know right so sometimes I can't even pay attention because I'm like and then I'll see like a lighting thing in the back. Like, and I'm like, I bet you they had like a light back there with like cellophane over it and like a gel. <laughs> and I just think about like how it's all set up. So does it ruin your um, your viewing pleasure then by tearing it apart? It doesn't ruin it. It just makes it more fun. Okay. Because I was told years ago that when I explained some of these secrets to the kids, they would go to a movie and I would ruin it for them. No, it just makes uh, it way more Do you feel like you're on the the end of an inside joke so pittsburgh is it becoming a new hub for filmmaking they should i'm so annoyed because they shoot down here all the time and they take up all my street parking (laughs) (laughs) because they have all these giant trailers and they'll be here for weeks and they'll take up all the parking and it's annoying (laughs) but they just got done shooting um billy porter's new series is it the league of your own no, Billy Porter's doing something different, but the League of Your Own is, was also down here. Um, last year, they shot Happiest Season with Audrey Plaza and Kristen Stewart. Um, trying to think. Oh, they shot Jason Momoa's Sweet Girl last year. Um, no, it wasn't last year. It was two years ago. But yeah, they shot a lot down here. It's a lot of smaller series. Like they've shot every season of Mindhunter here, um, which I was a PA on one day, the first, the second season. Um, my first year of college um, and it was actually a pretty decent gig um, I worked for maybe like maybe 14 or 16 hours okay <laughs> like, why was I, it only one day uh, because I didn't want to go back <laughs> like, oh, well. it was 14 or 16 hours and I got paid like 187 bucks for the day and I all I literally stood there all day like I was a like a traffic cone could have done my job <laughs> My back hurt so bad, and I was happy I got some good weather because if I was standing out there in the cold, I would have been miserable. You're not allowed to sit down. You have right. to stand the entire day outside. So what is the purpose of a PA? If someone walks by and they're, like, making a bunch of noise or, like, you're on the headset and they're, like, hey, I need you to go, like, do this and, like, tell this person to be quiet or okay. blah, blah, blah. You're just, like, the noise patrol. Okay. But some other Gays have like bigger jobs like they'll be like the coffee runner or they'll need to go get like things from the equipment uh trailer okay. like extension cords or sandbags or something so with there being these types of opportunities in Pittsburgh other than your one day as a PA have you looked into doing other things no <laughs> Why? All of, they're so annoying those jobs are so annoying I realized once like as soon as I did it and then all my other friends did it all the time and it's just like when it's so much time and like when you have like if I if it'd be so easy like if I still lived with my parents my parents paid for all my stuff if I didn't have like everything I'd be able to take stupid jobs that pay me nothing and work me to death like but it's just you have to do it like a lot of my friends are doing that where they're like starting at the bottom and working their way up and a lot of stuff but my whole thing like I changed my tune about wanting to like work up the ladder um I really just kind of want to 
like work and like have a savings and start buying my own equipment and like meeting okay. people yeah. with and kind of making my own independent films. I okay. don't really want to work on big crews unless I'm like doing my own stuff because it's just, it's so much grunt work for no money. Um, that's interesting. Do you know Rachel Zabo? I don't know. Okay. I, she, she works at the state. She does a lot of the performances there. And she's a hairdresser in Connellsville. And she's been working as the one of the hairdressers for some of these productions that have come in. Okay. And she talks about her experience of being working with some of these people that are extras and being miserable because they think they're prima donnas because they're an extra on a film that won't ever no one will ever see because they'll be edited out of the film. Yep. No, they have to sit in a room like I don't know why they get that tune because they sit in a room for literally 12 hours they have to sit there in costume they can't have their phones they can't have anything and they'll just be called for like here you're gonna go now and they'll shoot a little scene for like 30 minutes and then they'll go sit in the room again all day and extras get paid more than the PAs um but my extras were always fine because I, whenever I had extras, like you literally, the only way you could get someone to show up to be an extra in your film is if you were like best friends and you had free food <laughs> and you helped them get there, like transportation wise. So everyone who was an extra in my film were either other film students or my friends. So I never had problems with extras. Okay. So you're looking at creating your own independent films. Is there a market for that? Yeah, it's like a, like, honestly, it's probably the smart thing to do because m like, instead of working for like people and getting up the ladder that you might eventually like meet someone who helps you get into a bigger role. If you start like putting your money and your time into like making independent films and perfecting them, anybody can submit their films to like Tribeca, Sundance, bigger film festivals. And then you win awards and money and people who like see Sundance films, they always eventually get made into like the bigger ones that like like really like are like critic raved audience raved like they really are like winners they'll get like attention from like actual people with like millions of dollars who want to spend it on making a film because they want to have their name on a big hollywood hit so they'll buy your film from you like your rights and they'll like produce an actual feature like that's kind of like if i have any goal i'd rather that then work up the ladder. Interesting. I would have never, I would have never thought of that. So the stuff that you have done because of YouTube, Vimeo, and all these streaming sites, do you feel there's a new market for this type of independent film, these short films? Yeah, but you can't, if you want your films to be um, in like film festivals, you're right. not allowed to put it on the internet for oh, really? a year. You cannot, your film will be disqualified if they find it on the internet. Why is it that? It has to premiere at the festival. Okay. To be eligible for anything. Um, I, so but if you want to just make short films and little videos and stuff, and you're not interested in putting them in um, festivals or competitions, like that's fine. And there, people get tons of hits. People watch stuff, especially Vimeo. I see people... Um, post their Vimeo short films on TikTok all the time and their links and stuff. And people love them. People love that stuff. Um, and my friends still make their own little independent films and put them on Facebook and things. Um, cause not every film is a winner. You're not going to want to spend like, cause you have to pay entry fees for your films to go into the film festival. So if it's not like, like the best thing you've ever made, you're going to just want to post it on Facebook just for pe other people to enjoy on the internet. And like a lot of, they get a lot of views. Um, but it's just, unless you have like a monetized channel, like if you're not like a big YouTube creator and you don't have your channel monetized with like ads, you're not going to make any money off of it unless someone wants to like sponsor your channel, which is like pretty rare. The, um, okay, you'll love this one. I did an interview with somebody about a year and a half ago. His name is Ben Lancaster and he wrote the film, The Further Adventures of Waltz frozen head which is based on the concept of walt disney being in cryogenics okay okay he actually shot footage on disney's property without disney knowing about it 
I think I've heard about this or okay. you've told. It is, you need to watch it. It's a cute film, it really is. And it's a full length feature that he put together. And again, has it gone anywhere? I don't know. But that's what I'm wondering. Do people do it? If money was no object, and I know it is for you, would you, would you make stuff to share online for free because you love doing it? Or would you find something else to do because money was no object? No, I'd absolutely do that. If I had no money, this would be the one thing I would want to put my money into. Like, I don't really have any other like career goals or interests other than this, other than like, just like I do, I do Instacart, I do grocery delivery. It pays the bills. Like, that's what I do. Like, I don't have any other career goals or interests or like, I like have hobbies. Like I'm a huge collector, but you know what I collect? Movie memorabilia, <laughs> DVDs. Like I just, this is the only thing I would want to, if I had all the money in the world, I would just be like, I would be creating more jobs for the film industry because there really aren't that many like accessible jobs. Um, so if I literally had like millions of dollars, I would just be putting it into making films that I would want to make. Do you see with the pandemic, what has happened over the last year and a half, two years, that the way we view things or the way we look at things are different than when we did before, especially when it comes to film and entertainment? In, in what way different? That I don't have to go to a theater that I can do it on a streaming service and I can see okay. stuff that is made for streaming services that is just as good. It's awesome, okay? Like, it's really awesome that I was able to watch the new Dune movie the day it came out on HBO Max and I didn't have to leave my apartment. Like, it's awesome. But it sucks so bad for the people, like, making the movies because they are losing so much money. They're losing so much because of the stream sites, the contracts that they get for them to put these films on there don't make them nearly as much as stuff. I have a, a, an individual that I know that I've talked to a couple of times. She's working on an independent film right now in Arizona. And with what happened with Alec Baldwin a few weeks ago with the shooting in yeah. Santa Fe, can you see accidents like that happening? I mean, I know you probably haven't seen one personally, but do you see how this happens? It's just people kind of get like reckless. And it's also when like how I talked about like you work with people that you don't like because like they have like power issues and they think they know they're doing everything great. Like on one of my sets, like they were just being reckless and goofy. And one of my friends had like a panic attack and she had to like go to the hospital to like calm down. And like, because she literally couldn't breathe because she was like just so overwhelmed by like the energy on the set. And sometimes like that's a very small issue compared to like an actual injury. But sometimes people just like get careless and they like are like, I know how to do my job and they actually don't. So I don't like it's it's really not come out to be certain whose exact fault it was on that set. Um, but truly, it's like it's everyone's job on the set to make sure everyone's safe. like it's everybody's job. Um, because right now, but, it's me, they're just all pointing fingers at everybody. So Yeah, it really sucks, though, because like as an actor, like if you were on my set, it would absolutely not be the actors. Like in school, we have not been like, this is what we've been taught. It's not the actor's job to like check their props. Like you're supposed to, if you have like anything dangerous on your set, like we weren't allowed to use guns. I think for that reason, but okay. even if you have dangerous, like a stunt or something, like you needed someone to just like fall off, like fall down some stairs or something. We had to have Terry Cruz, uh, who was our safety coordinator, he had to be on set supervising the stunt and working you through the stunt. Like you, like there's a safety coordinator and a, like a prop coordinator, all these people have specific jobs to make sure that doesn't happen. Because it would be the producer's responsibility, correct? Not the producer, because the producer on a major film, okay. um, they are doing like more, the, so the producer maybe, if there's like a, nine months of shooting there's also multiple producers the producer might be on set like 10 times like they don't come on set unless there's something wrong like you're over budget or you're behind time or there's like um some kind of like if there was like a like a issue that could become like a legal issue or something because producers have a way bigger job that's um set apart from being actually on set so the producer i don't even like if they had a producer there um, 
they probably were in like their little office doing paperwork. <laughs> so in other it's, words, it goes back on the director. Yeah, the the prop master okay. and the safety coordinator and the director. Okay, okay. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, who's the one? You said that one of them wants to- I have to... one that's interested, but she's sitting there very quiet right now. Which one? I could tell it was you because you look artsy. You look very, <laughs> you look like everybody I went to film school with. Really? <laughs> yeah, we all dress like that. <laughs> You should see my Sarah, who's now 14 and is a freshman here. I saw that your photo is on Facebook. She's so you, grown up. Did you see the three shades of hair? I mean. I, I didn't yeah. see that. And Andy, my middle one, is a senior this year. Oh, they grow up so fast. I feel so old. And Dan's a senior cow. And oh, I know that. And he starts his, And he stars his buddy tomorrow night starting um, at Cal. Star. He's a star he's in all of the shows yeah so anyway um anything else you'd oh, like to say sir yeah go ahead yeah if you go to if you go for filmmaking um that doesn't necessarily mean you need like you if you're doing filmmaking you can't really have a minor because it'd be really tough um but you can take like there's tons and tons of room for extra electives and clubs and after school activities and things like I did so much stuff like I like I literally took like an acting class every semester like I loved it there's different acting classes um there's art classes where you can like actually like learn how to draw and do digital art and stuff like you can take whatever you want for your elective classes so you don't have to be just like bored with just film and uh your general electives you could take other things um that you also enjoy because those help you out with your films. Like they let you take them because if you like want to do, because we have animation classes too. You okay. could do animation. Um, so if you take other art classes or other things, or um, if you want to take other electives, they can help you what you're like translate to what you're doing in filmmaking. So a lot of it will like kind of inspire you to do other stuff. Okay. Say, and this is, this is the worst case scenario. Okay. You're not able to finish the 18 credits me yeah what are you gonna do i'm gonna plan b i'm a film school dropout because i think okay. that sounds way cooler <laughs> <laughs> so i'm okay with that um okay. and also i would literally i'd have spent so much money just to get a piece of paper that says i graduated like so, so much money. What, six, what six classes are you missing um all general electives <laughs> I so in other words, like, they have nothing to do with the major nothing at all i took i've completed every single cinema course at the school every single one that i'm required for all i have left is like math science english language and then my like senior thesis yeah nobody needs those they're not important right yeah i know i wanted to finish <laughs> i could easily take all of my general elective classes online at a community college for like 200 bucks a freaking class um and then just complete my senior thesis at point park yeah. but i do that while we're all still in masks and I don't know what's going to happen if we're going to get quarantined or the school's going to sh get shut down. So I'm not doing that right now. I'm like, and I need to save up money, move into a house out of downtown. Like, it's just like, literally we learned about all these film directors. Some of these like really famous film directors didn't win their first Oscar until they were like on their deathbed, like 87 years old, couldn't even be there. They had to like video chat. Like <laughs> it's like, it's a long game. It's a long game. I'm not in a rush. Okay. So, hmm, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. No, I think you've answered all my questions. Is there anything you'd like to say before you go? Oh, maybe one more thing. Um, film school, if you want to be a filmmaker, is absolutely not required. Like, you do not have to have a degree to do filmmaking. And it's, it might be like a waste of money to some of you, but like the experience and the people you meet and the connections you make and the things you learn are absolutely worth it. It's fun ass to fun time. <laughs> um, Thank so you for correcting yourself there. It's a fun time. <laughs> I tried really hard the whole time not to curse and the bell made me so uh, anxious that it came out. <laughs>